post-mortem analyses have shown that testicular fibrosis exists in some AAS users, meaning uh, scar tissue is developed in the testes. And there is some, you know, anecdotal evidence that people who use hormones and andro anabolic androgenic steroids may be more likely to develop testicular cancer also. <music> friends, welcome to a new series. Having finished the cholinergic series and in the process of preparing my serotonergic series, I wanted to produce a short series for you guys composed of four episodes in which I will discuss how to repair your natural testosterone production as well as your fertility as a consequence of having used anabolic androgenic steroids for an extended period. Now, I want to make a disclaimer that this is not medical advice. I discuss this for informational, educational purposes only. And uh, I also want to alert you to the fact that each of the four episodes in this series has a relevant blog post on my blog, linked to in the description below, which you will find to be very helpful and more clear and specific than my own uh, video content. However, it is not too academic. I want you guys to be aware it's not very long-winded, not very academic, and easy to understand. My focus has been to make this as easy to understand as possible and as useful as possible for uh, speculation on your own recovery. So, let's get started. First of all, let me say that there are uh, protocols for the rehabilitation of natural testosterone and fertility in the bodybuilding community. The most notable of which are Dave Palumbo's fertility proto protocol, which involves HCG, HMG, and uh, clomiphene citrate, which is also called Clomid. One of the brand names is Clomid. Uh, Dave has had this protocol out for a while. Dave uh, stopped using anabolic and androgenic steroids, and as you can see, that's really true by the fact that he has, uh, sh uh, you know, gotten so much smaller. And he's had three children since then, which is uh, won wonderful. Congratulations, Dave. Uh, Boston Lloyd, who is also sort of a semi-protege or friend of Dave Palumbo, has a similar protocol. The difference is that he recommends a much higher use of HCG and he also recommends, um, well not recommends, but he thinks the protocol may work better if you are on testosterone replacement therapy at the same time. With that said, um, my protocol does not differ too much from either of theirs, although it differs more than theirs differs from each other. Uh, I have some changes in mind that are reflective of both clinical experience as well as my personal experience in trying to recover my natural testosterone and fertility since I stopped using anabolic and androgenic steroids in late 2018. So uh, to begin, in, in this episode we're going to talk about the physiological production of testosterone uh, in the testes as well as uh, how it's regulated by the brain. And we're going to discuss specifically the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. So let's begin. The hypothalamus and pituitary are two parts of the brain that are very relevant for this production. The hypothalamus uh, produces something called gonadotropin releasing hormone. Gonadotropin releasing hormone is received by the pituitary, which in turn produces something called gonadotropins. Gonadotropins include luteinizing hormone, which is called LH, and follicle stimulating hormone, which is called FSH. LH, luteinizing hormone, signals to the uh, Leydig cells in the testes to produce intratesticular testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone, which is also called FSH, signals to the Sertoli cells in the testes to produce, uh, to mature and differentiate uh, sperm cells, which are produced in, re in response to the fact that there is intratesticular testosterone. So FSH matures the sperm that are produced because of LH, which LH caused the intratesticular testosterone to increase. So intratesticular testosterone causes the production of sperm, and then FSH causes the maturation and differentiation of the sperm. Now, if you do not have FSH, you will have impaired spermatogenesis. However, if you do not have LH, you will have no spermatogenesis. So as you can see, LH is sort of the more critical factor in the matter, which means that the intratesticular testosterone, the production of testosterone in the testes, is the first point of departure for the production of uh, spermatogenesis. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, let's talk about feedback mechanisms. See, your body has feedback, feedback mechanisms that will naturally prevent uh, LH and FSH from being produced from the pituitary. Specifically, 
Uh, high levels of testosterone, whether they're endogenous or injected into your cell, will cause the hypothalamus to stop producing gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will in turn cause the pituitary to stop producing luteinizing hormone. When the pituitary stops producing luteinizing hormone, your intratesticular testosterone will be impaired, meaning that your gonads will shrink and they will stop producing as much testosterone. This is a feedback mechanism so your body doesn't produce too much testosterone. If you have too much estrogen, it will cause your hypothalamus to stop producing gonadotropin releasing hormone again, but this will have an effect both on LH being produced by the pituitary as well as FSH, and it will have a particular effect on FSH. So the more estrogen your body has, the less the production of FSH and the less the, the Sertoli cells in your testes will mature and differentiate sperm cells. So this is sort of an overview of both the HPG system as well as how it is uh, affected by its feedback mechanisms that come from testosterone and estrogen. Now briefly I want to discuss with you guys how likely it is to recover after an extended period of um, anabolic androgenic steroid use. Now most of the studies on this matter are done on people that are using either uh, male contraception or testosterone replacement therapy. In those people, 100% of people recover in about two years. However, uh, a majority of them recover actually in six months. Research on people that have taken anabolic and androgenic steroids show that some don't recover fully, even with uh, therapy, for 144 months. There are reasons for this difference. Um, the main reasons speculated by clinicians are the dose of the anabolic androgenic steroids, as well as the duration, but of course the duration is common with, uh, with uh, TRT, but the dose and the variety of anabolic androgenic steroids. Uh, I can speculate also, you'll find reference, a reference for this in the fourth episode of the series, the blog post, that there is some uh, permanent damage being done to the testes from high dose anabolic androgenic steroids, particularly the ones that are more andro androgenic. Specifically, uh, studies on post-mortem analyses have shown that Testicular fibrosis exists in some AAS users, meaning uh, scar tissue is developed in the testes. And there is some, you know, anecdotal evidence that people who use hormones and andro anabolic androgenic steroids may be more likely to develop testicular cancer also. So there may be some oxidative damage being done to the uh, testicular, uh, to the gonads. Now, uh, I would also like you guys to note that age is a uh, complicating factor in this, as is the duration of use, of course, uh, and as well, Asian, East Asian ethnicity. Now, East Asian ethnicity is known to be a uh, complicating factor, meaning that East Asians have a more of a difficult time regaining the activation of the HPG system and re reducing its dysfunction. However, uh, this is in the scientific literature. However, from anecdotal experience, having been involved uh, sort of in the power sports for uh, over you know for a very long time i noticed that the more people are naturally visibly virile meaning the more hairy they are um, usually darker skinned the more likely they are to easily regain regain function um, and the the less hairy they are and the less uh, vir virile they are naturally it seems the harder it is for them to regain function uh, and of course, East Asians being less hairy and less visibly uh, masculinized generally. So uh, next, the next episode, we'll, discuss, we'll begin to discuss the tools. For two episodes following this one, we'll discuss the tools that can be used to repair HPG function. And in the episode after that, I will discuss with you guys a speculative protocol based on one I used for myself that I think may be the most effective for regaining function. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.